Welcome back to Grow With Alan, episode seven. It's uh, ooh, 18th, 19th of April, something like that. And uh, well, the weather's been absolutely glorious, isn't it, for the last week? In fact, it's not very often you end up having to water things in April, but if you're not doing that already, you need to, because seeds won't germinate in this, uh, you know, they'll love the warmth, which is fantastic, but they will need some water as well. So um, out with the watering can in the sunshine, that's not such a bad thing, is it really? Treat yourself to a drink at the same time, like I do, eh? Uh, had the first pins of the summer yesterday. Now, um, today, what are we gonna be doing today? Well, uh, we're gonna be doing a bit of successional sowing, so uh, making sure that there's a constant flow of things through the summer, rather than ending up with supplying all the neighbors and then going, oh, where's it all gone after a month? I've done all that, I put in all that effort and not ended up with very much to eat. And the second thing that uh, we're gonna be doing today is just having a look around at the things which are growing already. Uh, because I always think one of the hardest things in vegetable gardening is knowing which is a seedling and which is a weed, when, particularly with things that take a while to come up and take a while, and when you're sowing things direct into the ground. Um, it took me years to understand which was a weed and which was a parsnip, for example, because they take weeks to get going. So I'm just gonna have a little run round and give you a sort of a picture of um, where we are with things. Does that sound okay? So let's kick off in the greenhouse. Uh, me crouching down as usual, it always seems to happen, doesn't it? So let me just uh, stand up a little bit here and I'm just gonna show you how things are going so far. Let's put the, uh, put this down here. If I put this on the floor, then I can see and make sure that you can see everything that's going on. So kicking off with zinnias. These are the purple prince zinnias. That's what you should be looking for once the plants got growing a little bit. Um, these are actually gonna end up at the gardening club for our kids at their school uh, because they grow quite quickly and they're a perfect thing for them to grow within the term and get a result because you want kids to be encouraged. So give them things that grow fast just need to make sure that there's a slugs don't get them otherwise they'll be a bit disappointed won't they um, these are quite interesting to have a look at as well do you remember a couple of weeks ago I sowed chili peppers and peppers so here's what we've ended up with all look identical don't they they're not obviously uh, these are the chilies here and these are the sweet peppers just shows the importance of labeling doesn't it because they look absolutely identical um, at this stage, which of course they won't as they grow on. But I'm gonna leave them in here for a little bit longer because um, they need to get their true leaf. And you can see they just, they've just got their true leaf is the leaf that um, distinguishes them as a variety. Whereas when things first come up, often the leaves look quite similar. The first seed that comes out of the leaf. First seed, the first leaf that comes out of the seed. Oh. It wasn't a late night. Now, let's have a look at what else is coming on here. These are the tomatoes, which are actually doing marvellously well. So that's the yellow pear, and this is the marglobe. What I have done is potted these on at the moment, because yesterday I had a look at the bottom of the pots here, and I could see roots coming through. As soon as you begin to see roots coming through the bottom here, it's time to pot something on. And you've only got a relatively short window. Um, I found that typically, if you don't pot something on, once you see that then if you say you leave it for a fortnight and then try and pot it on the plant never really recovers so it's quite important to do that these are going to stay growing on these pots for probably another month now and they'll absolutely rock it let me show you what the effect of potting on is do you remember last week we potted on the cauliflowers this is a kale actually but uh, let me get a cauliflower as well so find one here we are that's as you remember, they were quite small, weren't they? So I potted those on one week ago. Look at the growth. It's extraordinary, isn't it? So that indicates that it was absolutely the right time to get them into a bigger pot with some ordinary compost rather than the seed compost. They were ready to go. Those will grow on for a couple more weeks and then we'll get them outside. We're going to have to uh, be a bit careful about that because the cabbage whites love them, the white fly love them, the pigeons adore them. I don't want to feed them, I want to feed me. I want to feed my family, and I'm sure you do as well. So we're gonna make sure they're well protected. Um, what else is growing on here quite nicely that you should have a look at? These are the leeks, which looks like a, quite a reasonable lawn, frankly. They're tiny little things at this stage. What I'm gonna do with these in a couple of weeks time is split them out into individual trays, and into, into trays and grow them on a bit before they go into the ground. 
leeks are quite an easy plant to grow as long as you don't get rust but we'll cover that when we get to it um, but at the moment they can just stay in here for a couple more weeks until they're a little bit higher up in the tray that's what you're looking for they're going okay uh, these are the these are the lettuce uh, we've got a couple of varieties here. This is Lolo Rosso, which is a sort of crinkly Italian type lettuce. And these are Nymums, which are a very deep red lettuce. Um, I'm going to grow these in this tray for probably another week until they've got a little bit bigger. And then at the time that these go outside into the ground, that's the time to sow some more in the trays here. Then you'll constantly get a nice supply of lettuce. Um, but, you know, for the time being, they're OK in there. I have got some lettuce, which we're going to plant out in a moment, actually. In fact, stuff I planted yesterday, I'm, I'll let you into a little secret. The bloke who does the editing is really quite crap for these films. And um, he accidentally deleted the intro bit, so that's why I'm redoing it now. But and so you'll suddenly go like, why is he wearing a different shirt in the next bit of the video? It's because I filmed it yesterday and then deleted it by accident. You learn. Um, so we'll look here. Here we are. Okay, you can see the cosmos coming on quite nicely. Here you can see the original leaf that came up out of the seed. And you can see their true leaf. They're becoming very distinctive now. So there's definitely cosmos. And if you sow cosmos direct, it will grow quite well, um, subject to not getting stugs. But that's what you're looking for, it's that sort of feathery leaf. What else have we got? Aha! These are the Alderman peas, the Victorian variety peas, the very tall ones, which I'd hoped to grow a big allotment, but the pheasants enjoyed rather than us. So they're actually ready to go outside now, um, but I'm not going to put these ones outside because they're already advanced a little bit. These ones are going to go to the kids' school as well, and I'm going to plant some more outside in a moment um, for us, because if I take these there, they've got a good chance of getting some peas within the term, and I reckon if the kids get some peas to eat fresh off the pod, and they get a couple of decent flowers, there's a good chance they're going to enjoy their garden and think when they're a bit older and go, you know what, it's quite an interesting thing to do. I enjoyed that. Um, I want to show you these because it doesn't always work out. These are sprouts. Look at those. The weediest looking seedlings you could imagine. A couple of these will be okay. That one there, that one there, possibly that one there. Sometimes things just don't grow the first time you plant them. It happens, just sow some more. Um, it's not the end of the world. I don't know why. Sometimes you just get a bad patch of seed. Sometimes you do something wrong, it gets too wet or too dry. But, you know, it doesn't always work and um, I'm happy to fess up to that. So, all going pretty well in the greenhouse. Um, yeah, let's get outside and do some successional sowing and then go on a little tour of the other things that are growing in the greenhouse. See you in a minute. So these are the broad bean, Imperial Long Pod, which you can just see on the left, and the Sugar Snap Peas Oregon, which I put in uh, about a month ago now. And you can see they're really moving on quite nicely. And they're at a stage where I think if I put some more into the soil now, the soil's got a bit warmer, or other peas at this stage, you know, it could be a different variety, no need to stick with the same thing all season long. Um, then I should get that nice spread, which I'm kind of looking for. So um, let's do that. I'm going, to, I'm going to stick to the same variety of broad beans which I uh, put in over there, the Imperial Green Long Pod, because I know they're a good, reliable variety. Um, if, you, if you do grow broad beans planting at this time of year, there is a risk that they're going to suffer from more bugs, particularly black fly, which is a bit of a curse, to be honest. Um, but I still think it's worth putting them in. You can always spray them with dilute um, washing up liquid if you do get black fly. It seems to work really well. So um, it's going to be exactly the same process as, as planting them before. So literally I'm going to leave, I don't know, between the rows here. So that's the peas over here. Um, huh. Well, it's just enough room to walk between really. It may be about 50 centimetres. So I'm just literally going to draw it out again like this. Oh, I'm going to have to stand up for this. You won't see me, which is always good. Um, Draw it out like this, like that, and put a couple of sticks in so I know where things are. Always important. Uh, 
and get the beans. These are the last of my broad beans actually from the Big Allotment Challenge seed order. They gave us the most extraordinary amount of money for seeds last year so I went for it and uh, probably won't need to buy seeds for a lot of my things for quite a while because seeds will keep. There's no need to constantly replace every year. So I'm putting these about, oh, let me think, I don't know, 10 centimetres apart. I like to spread the broad beans uh, reasonably well and I'm doing a double row. So there's a row here and a row here. So there's a, um, and the row's about, I don't know, 10 centimetres wide as well. It just means that you get a decent stack of beans all at once, which is always nice. The soil is lovely and warm now because we've had amazing weather, haven't we? I've just checked the date actually, it is, it's the 18th, Saturday the 18th of April, which, if anything, is proving to be one of the most glorious Aprils we've had for years. I'm just hoping it doesn't mean that we're going to get a terrible summer. The soil's still quite wet underneath, which is great. Um, I don't really want to start getting the watering can out quite yet. Got a signal on the end there. Um, need some labels to see if I've got a label made up. Here we are. Coriander, leaf beet, broad beans. You get the idea. Okay, so the broad beans, I'll just put a label in there. And um, honestly, growing broad beans is a doddle. It's all about just getting good ground in place to start with. So the seeds are in. I'm just going to draw the soil back over like that. I will give that a bit of a water with watering can in a minute. Other than that, that's fine. So now the Alderman peas, those are the Victorian variety, the very tall variety, which I mentioned. Um, I'd grown at big allotment and I wanted to grow again here to see, just to prove to myself that I'm good at it. Um, so they're gonna go here. I won't grow them in a wigwam actually, because I'm gonna grow the beans next to it. So I will spread them out a bit. So I'm gonna grow them here um, again growing peas it's about drawing a nice long that is spade width drill out like that again a really simple crop to get going get it about the width of a spade like that Just pull the soil to the side get a couple of sticks again to make sure you know where the row is try not to stand on your wire that runs to the microphone like I constantly do there we are Almost it. Put that in there. And the peas, you can be quite generous sort of with in the row. I mean, I'll read you exactly what it says. From, you can say these from March until late June. Draw out a flat drill, 15 to 20, 20, 20 centimetres wide, which is what we've done. Sow seeds, 20 seeds per 30 centimetres, spacing them five to seven metres, five to seven centimetres apart. All the Victorians would have spaced them two to three inches, I suppose. Be generous. You can always pull them up, can't you? So, I mean, I'm just not going to worry too much about these. I'm literally just going to sprinkle them in the ground like this. If any, any of them look far too close, you can always move them. But just... Sprinkle a few peas in the ground like that. If you've got a problem with mice in your area, you might need to put a bit of protection down to stop the, stop the mice getting them. Um, just a bit of netting really is as good as anything. So they, uh, they don't like risking getting themselves in a bit of a tangle. Here we are. What could be easier than sowing peas like that? It's in well prepared ground, it's, this is the ground that's been well manured. The label, pop that in there. And then literally, again, it's just a simple case of dragging soil back over the top like that. Giving them a bit of water and leaving them to it. Honestly, it's great, isn't it? Could gardening get any easier than growing some peas once the soil gets warmer? What else have I got left here today to get in outside? Oh yes, lettuce. Let's get some lettuce in. 
Right, I've retrieved those lettuce from the greenhouse. These are just ordinary cost lettuce, nothing fancy about them at all, frankly. Um, but they're just seeds I had. I'm not a big fan of salad, I mean, you know. It's easy to get some exercise, really. Um, but when you're growing lettuce, you can use the space that you've got between rows and just plant it. So I've just put these broad beans, and those broad beans we just put in here and the peas here, the lettuce can go in the ground that's really just a walkway between them for the time being because the lettuce will be done and finished and eaten and, and, and drizzled with salad dressing long before any of these things are really ready to be uh, picked. So actually, they, you know, you can just pop them straight in between. So um, these little trays are quite handy. So you just get the bottom, press it up like that and you get a little plant. There we are. And um, just make a little hole and pop it in. Obviously, the big problem with growing lettuce, I will give this some water in a minute, um, slugs. Nothing else really gets them. They can stand the cold. The birds don't really like them. Um, but the slugs, they love them. So the options are to do with slugs, to get rid of slugs. You can put some beer traps out, um, which really just sort of yogurt pots with a bit of beer in them and an old roofing slate or something like that over the top because the slugs they like a good old drink i think it's actually the um, yeast they go for um, and they sort of clamber in and drown a bit like swimming in the old i don't know if you're old enough you might remember the um the european union was was known to have had a bigger wine oversupply for the moment i think we've we've dealt with that um and they used to call it the european wine lake so i suppose it would have been a, it's the slug equivalent of swimming in the European wine lake, wine, the slug equivalent of swimming in the European wine lake. Um, but if you don't want to use your beer, the alternative is obviously slug pellets. Um, it's entirely up to you really, whether you are, whether you use them or not. Um, it's the only thing I do tend to use, I tend to be entirely organic apart from that. Um, Simply because it is a bit of a choice, really. Who you, who do you want to feed? Do you want to feed them, or do you want to feed you? Keeping the ground nice and well hoed and clear as well is also a big factor, because slugs don't like crawling across rough ground. They like an easy life. So let's put this one in here. Um, yeah, just keeping on top of the weeds, keeping on the, keeping the soil good is always going to help. There's quite a few lettuces here, but say don't don't put too many in at once because there's only so much salad you can eat, isn't there, really? Oh, it's quite dodgy soil there. Um, let's move along a bit over here. One more here. And that one's a bit rubbish. Okay, so that's the salad in. Um, let's have, give them a good soak because it is a bit of a, a bit of a shock to the old root system to be hoiked out like that. And those will grow on and be ready. I should imagine probably pulling the first one in uh, probably about a month's time. They really do rock it on once they're in the ground. Right, what's next? A uh, bit of coriander planting, sound good? Go with the salad. Coriander's a really easy thing to grow. This is coriander cilantro, uh, and it goes straight into the ground. Uh, but again, it's one of those things you have to keep sowing through the season, because it does tend to, uh, it runs to seed and flowers quite quickly once the dry weather comes. So it's, it's sort of a keep it going, keep it going type thing. So literally, I'm just using this, actually, I've just run this over already. Just draw a little drill out like that. Um, and because it grows so quickly, again, you can use it as that sort of fill the gap type crop. So it can go between the new set of peas that have just got in here and those sticks which I've put up for the um, French run, tall French runner beans. Quite big seeds. I'm sure everyone's familiar with what they look like as uh, seeing them in the kitchen. But um, literally just put them a few inches apart into the bottom of the drill and 
cover them up and they will sprout quite quickly actually. Um, it's quite a satisfying crop to grow because it seems semi or exotic almost, doesn't it? You just drop it in the ground and um, off it goes. I'll just bang a few extra in. Again, there's, there's never any harm in having a few extra seeds in because what it does is helps identify where the things you're growing are as opposed to where the weeds are. So what I'll do just before I cover that, because these are quite dry seeds, is just put a bit of water on it like that. And then just get this here and run it over like that just to cover it up. And that's it. The coriander will sprout beautifully, he said, optimistically. Update on the Solan white garlic. Look at that, storming along. And you can see just over there in front of it are the shallots. Uh, and over there are the onions. This weather is doing them a treat, isn't it? And just over here, just moving along slowly, you can see the first of the parsnips are just coming through. Just see if I can find one that's zooming on. There it is. So can you see that? Oh, maybe I'm getting a bit too... Oh, no, no, I'm too far ahead. There it is. Just over here, the first of the parsnips, just coming up beautifully. There's tiny little things there. Always a bit tricky to spot them in amongst the weeds because they do take a little while to come through, which is why it's so important to put several in at once, because if you get a little cluster, it's easier to identify that they're parsnips and you're not your weeds. The, these are the beetroot, red ace. Let me just zoom in a little bit. You can see what I did was to put several seeds together at each station. So you can see them coming up and being distinctly different to the weeds that are around them. Because as I say, it's really difficult sometimes just to tell what is something you've sown and something which is a weed. So that's what you're looking for with beetroot. Typically, apart from the more golden stuff, it tends to have quite a red little stalk on it. Those are definitely not weeds. You want to hang on to those ones. So this is the patch where I put the larkspur seeds in a couple of weeks ago. As you can see, there's really nothing to be seen as yet, apart from a few little weeds around the surface. But I'm not going to take any of those out because um, it'll disturb the soil. The larkspur are really slow germinating, and um, I know it says on the packet that, uh, you know, easy to grow, super easy to grow. And I think they probably are, but what um, confuses people is the... Um, the time they take to germinate so it becomes hard to tell what's a weed what's a larkspur so I'm not going to do anything at all with this I'm just going to leave it and with a bit of luck there'll be something there uh, the one thing I am doing though is making sure that I keep it damp in this lovely hot weather these are the parsley um, you can see the baby leaf and the true leaf on these so uh, you should be able to recognize what's actually a parsley and um, what's actually just the uh, a weed that's come up in the row I was just going to quickly show you the rhubarb. If you bought rhubarb fresh from a garden centre, you might be slightly disappointed with it the first year or so. This rhubarb is in its third year now, and it just takes a couple of years to get the roots into the ground and develop, and it's now looking magnificent. All I've done with this is made sure that when it was planted, it was planted into well-manured ground, and then each autumn I just put a little bit of um, manure on top of it, and, uh, and that just keeps it going. But uh, yeah, with a bit of luck, we'll be having uh, rhubarb and custard and uh, all sorts of things very soon. Right, that's all for this week. Uh, not so much going on this week because I think there is that always a little bit of a lull at the end of April between getting all the things in that go in quite early and then in May getting some of the more tender things and the things that which are going to grow on ready for next year. Things like the purple sprouting broccoli and the scarlet emperor runner beans, which we'll be getting on with shortly. So. If you haven't got things in already that should, you know, if you look on the seed packet, it says should be in sort of March, April time. That's absolutely fine. Things do catch up. Get them in now. But the main thing to think about at the moment is just making sure that you're potting things on before they get too big for the pots, that you're hoeing regularly in the allotment to make sure you're keeping the weeds down and that you're watering stuff because the sun is wonderful, but it is drying out. As ever, questions are welcome and thanks ever so much for watching and I'm really appreciating, appreciating even all your positive comments. Enjoy your garden this week.